staircase that we'd walk by every day on our way to lunch until one day we had to stop and ask ourselves, what exactly is this thing? What exactly is it here for? I mean, normally staircases like these have entrances at the top, a door through which one enters a building, but this one didn't have a door. It had a window. And who would build a staircase just to get to a window? Capitalism doesn't allow for this sort of uneconomical thing. Everything in our capitalist society has to have a purpose. But where does that leave this particular staircase? Can you even call it a staircase when all it does is let you peep into a window? Of course you can't. You can only call it art. A work of art shaped like a staircase. There probably used to be a door here that fell out of use due to some extenuating circumstances until renovations covered it up completely and transformed it into a window. The staircase was likewise rendered obsolete, but since demolishing an entire staircase would be an expensive proposition, it had been left there. But take a better look at the right-hand banister. Upon closer inspection, you might notice that a segment of the railing has apparently broken off and been subsequently replaced. Yeah, you get it? Who would go and repair a useless piece of garbage? Well, having caught on to all of this, I began an investigation into the hyper art of the world. It was too much to handle all by myself, so I enlisted the help of my art students. And as we delved into our investigative research, it soon became apparent that our work needed a more appropriate name. The word hyper art was too broad, since it included anything and everything that exceeded description as art. What we were searching for was more like a specific subset of hyper art. In the strictest terms, it was a useless and defunct object attached to someone's property and aesthetically maintained. But we couldn't seem to come up with a name that would fit all these criteria. And then we came up with Thomason. This was 1982, the year that Gary Thomason was batting cleanup for the Yomiuri Giants. Thomason had the unfortunate nickname of the Electric Fan, which if you think about it, was exactly what he was. Night after night, he would stand in the batter's box, whiffing mightily at the ball, down on three strikes every time. He had a fully formed body, and yet served no purpose to the world. And the Giants were still paying a mint to keep him there. It was a beautiful thing. I'm not being ironic here either. Seriously, I can think of no way to describe Gary Thomason except as living hyper art. And so we named the objects of our search Thomasons. But still, what exactly are they doing here?